Professor Pekosh, when you look at some of the things that worry you, and I'll get onto the vaccines in a second, I mean, how do you explain 20,000, in certain cases, 40,000 new cases a day in some European countries? What did the leadership get wrong? Well, one of the things we have to realize is this change from summer months where people were outdoors, making it a lot easier to space between themselves. We know transmission is less efficient outdoors. Even under those conditions, we were seeing large numbers of cases. Now we're moving to a time where people are moving indoors. They're moving into more confined spaces. Um, those are much more optimal conditions for the virus to spread. Combine that with the fact that even though we've had huge numbers of cases around the world, most of the population is still completely susceptible to infection. So you've got a large number of susceptible people moving into conditions where virus spread is going to be more efficient. Now you're seeing that surge of cases. The things that worked for us in the summer are not working as well right now because the conditions in which people are, are, are gathering together and uh, are more optimal for the virus. Andrew, will the number of hospitalization actually catch up with the number of infected, or has the virus changed to what we saw back in March? Yeah, this is an important point to, to realize, that the case numbers um, are one indication of the spread of the virus. Hospitalizations often lag the case numbers by anywhere from 7 to 10 days. So. As we see these large spikes of cases, it's only going to be a week later that we start seeing the, the comparative spike in, in hospitalizations and in deaths. And what that means is that if we put something in place now in terms of greater public health interventions, we won't be seeing the effects for another week to two weeks. So this is where action right now is really going to be important. It doesn't have to be a complete lockdown like we had before, but we should be using the data that, we're, that the testing is giving us, that the contact tracing is giving us, to provide much more targeted interventions to slow the spread of the virus. And again, this is going to take a week to two weeks before we see the effect. So the sooner you implement these public health interventions, the better off you'll be in terms of the total case numbers that you'll see a week from now. Andrew, how close are we to a vaccine? So this is the latest, you know, coming from, from the UK. Of, of course, trials, but also the, the speedy approval of a new vaccine is different from country to country. Are we making progress or is it two step forwards, one step backwards? Yeah, there have been some mixed results this week in terms of uh, in terms of antivirals and treatments and vaccines. What you will be seeing over the next few weeks is many of the phase three clinical trials, the trials that are much larger, sometimes 20, 30, 40,000 people, um, many of those trials will be reporting their preliminary results. So the first 10,000 people that were immunized, they'll report on results from those individuals, particularly safety and how well the people have responded to the vaccine in terms of their immune responses. So those preliminary reports are gonna start coming out soon, and those will be the, that'll be the data that companies will use to try to get emergency use authorization or those kind of early approvals to uh, start planning for widespread vaccinations. You won't see the full phase three results until probably December or January at the earliest, simply because there's a lot of patients being enrolled in these studies and a lot of laboratory work that has to be done uh, to analyze their immune responses and the uh, safety from there.